Seven months ago, just past midnight, my best friend Matthew and I get on a bus. Shortly after, two intoxicated males board the bus and come to the back where we are sitting. I distinctly remember the way the one looks at me, that look of smugness. Who are you down with? He's now towering over me. I'm not down with anyone, I say in an almost aggressive response. He brandishes an eight-inch blade. It's right in front of my face. I can feel the surge of adrenaline as my heart feels as if it's going to beat out of my chest. Who are you down with? He repeats the question. Staring wide-eyed at the blade, my tone drastically changes. <laughs> I'm not down with anyone. He proudly states the gang he's in. Every muscle in my body tenses up. I have a death grip on the vertical railing beside me. Okay, from my position, I could probably kick him. Hopefully he drops the knife and I rush him. What about his friend? Is my friend Matthew aware of what's happening here? What if he doesn't drop the knife? Does his friend have a knife as well? All these thoughts are rushing through my head. I'm just going to appear calm, but be vigilant. If he makes any sudden movements, then I'll react. What? You going to leave me hanging? My eyes were so fixated on the knife, I didn't realize that he was holding out his free hand in a gang sign as an invitation to give him a fist bump. I, as gently as I could, He turns his attention to a larger gentleman sitting in front of me and makes some offensive remarks. With a quick glance at the blade, the larger gentleman gets uncomfortable and decides he's going to exit towards the front of the bus. The knifeman masks his face with a red bandana and in a muffled voice, he very casually says, I'm going to stab him in the neck. Okay. I gotta do something, I gotta do something. What am I gonna do? Before I can react, Matthew springs upward to follow behind and I follow suit. Okay, we're doing this. The man is dangerously close to the potential victim. I yell, hey, and simultaneously squeeze by Matthew. The man now faces me with a large serrated knife in hand and looks intensely into my eyes. He advances. I quickly react and kick him in the chest, followed by the right cross, sending him to the bus floor. <sighs> Matthew and I wrestle him off the bus, where a grappling match begins between me and the man over the knife. I manage to disarm and detain him. However, I am stabbed in the process. I barely feel the pain as the adrenaline is powerfully coursing through my veins. Police arrive and are able to apprehend him. I later receive eight staples in the back of my thigh. Who is this guy? I will admit that I made some very quick assumptions within the moments of the entire ordeal, based on my own street's intuition. Here's what I guessed. He's fresh out of jail. He was introduced to a gang. He got a few drinks in him, and now he wants to pump his chest and make a name for himself. He's not a bigger guy, so he brought a knife along. I could clearly label him as a criminal. Now, what is the function of a negative label? Commonly, we use it to alienate people or to separate ourselves from what makes us uncomfortable. In fact, we use a negative label to protect ourselves. When we use a negative label for another person, we are saying that I'm not like that person and I never will be. We use a negative label to shine a light in a way that all that we see is their flaws. I can just as easily ask, what is the function of a positive label? Because after this whole event, the public was very quick to label me a hero. And it felt good. <laughs> I've been asked multiple times, what made you capable of reacting the way you did? Was it your military experience? The fact that you volunteer with Bear Clan? Your boxing? Yes. It felt really good to be labeled a hero. We use the positive label to shine the light on the good, overpowering any presence of our past mistakes. When we use labels, 
either good or bad, all that we see is a small portion of who they are. We don't see the whole person. I love hearing the ring of the label hero when people talk about me. But what if I were to tell you that I am a criminal? That I share the same negative label as the person I was stabbed by? Because I do. Just over a year before this whole incident, I was sitting in jail. <laughs> I've had many run-ins with the law. I am no stranger to the back of the police car. In fact, it's not the first time I've had a knife in my face. It's actually one of many times. In my story, I've placed myself in many dangerous situations. Where I come from, it's not very hard to find those places. With all that said, I've since found a new path and will now call myself a contributing member of society. However, by Merriam-Webster's definition, by the Oxford English definition, by the Google definition, <laughs> I am and always will be a criminal. Actually, I can make the educated assumption that most of you are criminals. Maybe not to the extent of myself or my friend with a knife on the bus, but nonetheless, from an academic point of view, the majority of people are A criminal is a person who has committed a crime. That is the definition. It doesn't say when. It doesn't say why. It doesn't say whether you're caught or not. It simply says a person who has committed a crime. Yet we don't see anyone including that in their introductions. Hi, I'm Jerry. I'm a criminal. We don't want to associate ourselves with that word, criminal. It has such a negative connotation, doesn't it? Maybe you stole something. Maybe you drove at an excessive speed. Maybe you smoked a drug that wasn't quite legal yet. <laughs> After these examples, I can make the argument that most people are literally, as the book states, criminals. So, just imagine you fit the criteria and now wear the label criminal. Whatever you did, I'm sure that when you think of it, your mind goes directly to the reasoning behind it. I was really hungry. I was going to pay it back. I was in a rush. I couldn't be late for work for the third time in a row. I was young, peer pressured, and it was going to become legal anyway. <laughs> so, if I were to label you as a criminal, you are very quick to acknowledge the story behind the label. Why don't we do that with everyone that wears that label? Acknowledge the story behind the label. Let's go back to our guy on the bus. Here's what we know about his story. He is indigenous, just recently out of jail. He was introduced to a gang. He was drinking. That is actually only a portion of his story. He is part of a bigger story. He is part of a much bigger story. I've heard this story before. This story is in our nation's history, the impacts of colonization, the horrors of indigenous children being forcefully removed from home and placed into residential schools, the stripping of our culture, our identity. The ripples continuously flow into our reserves, into our inner cities. Today, our indigenous communities run rampant with social issues, poverty, addiction, gang violence, families torn apart, poor living conditions. The systems imposed on us are designed for a prosperous nation. They are not meant for our communities which have been disadvantaged. We have been set up for failure. If you don't have the opportunity to come into our world and see what we see through our eyes, then look to the books. It's in the statistics. In Manitoba, 75% of all federally sentenced inmates are indigenous. In Saskatchewan, 74%. That is three quarters of the entire federal prison population that is indigenous in those two provinces. Every story has a conflict. In this story, the continuation of injustice towards our indigenous communities is the conflict. We use labels to draw up the conclusion of the story, 
but we don't look to the entirety of the plot that precedes it. With this troubled man, we didn't ask, what happened to him? Where in life did he go off the tracks? When did he need help that wasn't there? What social issues was he immersed in? We are quick to point out the criminal, the drug addict, the lousy parent. We give power to these labels and yell, more police, take the child, leave the family, stronger penalties. With these conclusions, we are just further fueling the cycle and allowing the story to repeat itself again and again. We, and as indigenous people, are growing tired of hearing the same old story. Tired of our men going to jail, of our families being torn apart. Tired of the epidemic of addiction. It is time to shift the narrative and rewrite the entire plot. We can begin to address the conflict and draw up a better, beautiful conclusion of this story when we acknowledge that there is a story. Acknowledge the story behind the label.